Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's episode, I'm going to be benchmarking and discussing my 3080 graphics card along with my Reverb G2. I'll be showcasing the various default settings within the VR settings of the simulator. To put the testing into context, it's good to take note of my system. My motherboard is an ROG Strix Z490F Gaming. My processor is an Intel Core i9-10900K. My graphics card is an NVIDIA RTX 3080. I have 64GB of RAM with a speed of 3200MHz. And I'm using a 970 EVO Plus NVMe M.2 SSD of 1TB, a very fast SSD. It's also worth noting that I'm using the most recent driver version from NVIDIA, it's the 466.27. I've done some testing with it and it's working really well uh, with my system. Another important thing to confirm is that I am using the OpenXR developer tool with a render scale of 70%, but the motion projection is disabled. It's also worth noting that I'm flying a Boeing 747-8 Intercontinental in New York City at 3.45 p.m. on the 15th of May 2021. Photogrammetry is set to on and the weather is set to few clouds. Here you can see the in-game VR settings are all set to low. Please be aware that I've kept the render scaling at 100 and the terrain level of detail as well as the object levels of detail at 100 throughout the testing just to make sure it's consistent. Another thing to take note of is that I've not turned anything off. I've got some things down to the lowest settings they can be. For example, texture super sampling is at 2 times 2 but nothing's actually turned off. Here you can see the native render resolution of 2452 by 2400 pixels per eye. This is the way you would see it through the G2 headset. The perspective is a bit strange, so the field of view is a bit weird when it translates to 2D, but you can see it's really smooth and I'm moving my head around on purpose to show you guys the cockpit and the outside views and to sort of show you the smoothness of the headset. It's important to understand that these aren't my optimized settings. You'll find that in the other tutorials of how best to set it up for the simulator. These are just benchmarks for the default VR settings within the simulator. You can see the FPS counters going from around 31 to 36. It even drops down to the late 20s. But please remember that the performance of the VR is not exclusively relying on the FPS. That's especially true for the OpenXR developer tool. Now throughout these tests, I have disabled the motion reprojection, but with it enabled, you can still get good performance at lower frame rates. Please check out the videos in the tutorials playlist to help you out with the OpenXR setting. For the medium settings, I've done exactly the same thing as the low settings. You can see the render scaling is at 100, terrain level of detail and objects level of detail are both at 100, and everything else is on medium settings. When using the medium settings, the FPS is slightly higher. You're looking at low to mid 30s and everything's starting to look a lot clearer through the headset. Things are in more detail, obviously. Uh, things in front of me like the flight instruments, the flight seat there, the panels, the buildings outside, the ambience of the light, everything's starting to improve. For the high settings, everything's set to high, and I've set everything to the second highest setting for each individual setting that cannot be set to high, like shadow maps and terrain shadows, for example. At this setting, you can really start to see the difference with the FPS. You can see it's around mid-20s to high-20s, but the clarity is even better, so it's improving each time you step it up, obviously. Uh, remember, I'm setting all of the settings at the same time, so there's so much room for optimization here. But again, I'm showing you the default settings for this. So you can see that the clarity is great. The smoothness is still fine. It's still fine. I can see slight micro stutters when I move my head fast, when I move it around fast, but generally it's still acceptable. And this setting is fine on my system. And these are the ultra settings. Everything set to ultra. Everything set to the highest parameter it can be. I've set water waves and glass cockpit refresh rate to high as there is no ultra available. 
And here we have the performance of the ultra setting. You can see now that the smoothness is not quite as good. There's definitely some micro stutters now when I'm moving my head around. But everything is looking brilliant. Everything is looking so clear, so detailed. It's really up to you whether you want to go for the clarity and the graphics, or if you want to go for the smoothness. It's best to get the best of both worlds, therefore optimizing your system is really important. Here you can compare the settings side by side. I tried to synchronize the footage as much as I could, but I flew different flights for each test, so it's about as close as I can get it. Hopefully it will give you a really good idea of what the differences are between the different default settings in VR. I don't notice too much difference between these two, however I don't use either settings when I play in VR. It does give you a very smooth experience however. When it comes to the high and ultra settings, the main difference I notice is the reflections on the window. You can see that now. Notice on the ultra settings that the reflection is always evident and it moves around with the lighting, it's just more obvious. So things like that are much more detailed when using ultra settings. But you can see the differences in the smoothness and clarity between the two settings as well. I really hope by benchmarking these settings you can see what works and what doesn't work in terms of VR with the 3080 and the G2. It's always a matter of going through the settings and tinkering different combinations of things to get your settings best optimized for your own systems. I hope this showcase has helped do that. Please like and subscribe. Thanks again for all of you who have subscribed. I look forward to making the next video soon. In the meantime, take care and stay safe.